Welcome everyone. I'm Zell and uh, well today guys we're going to do some unboxing. Uh, should be fun. We got some Civivi stuff here that's pretty interesting. Uh, first up we'll, uh, well, you know guys let's kind of wait for some people to filter in. Is there anything you guys would like to talk about while we're uh, kind of waiting? We only got three folks with us right now and there's five. Hey, numbers are going up quick. I do have some other interesting things here. We have a one that I can't pronounce the name for, of course. Uh, Best Tech Knife. This is that front flipper. And uh, I can't front flip oh, on the camera like that, but pretty nice. Uh, I'm not a real big fan of the way they did the front flipper. My hands don't work with it. Uh, this is the Aquila and the Courser that we're going to unbox, and then I've got an incisor down here as well. And uh, people are starting to gather up. We'll just go ahead and get started with it. Go ahead and use that best tech. See if I can front. Hey, I did front flip it. What a deal. Use that to get these little safety tabs out of here. And mine are not marked for some reason. I don't know if uh, we sent them to me before they got the stickers ready or what but uh so complete complete uh unknown as to which one we're getting and things we should look at as we go in here we have this uh hey what's going on sharp grail we have these new deals here which are little instruction sheets you know kind of like you get with just about anything maintenance warranty all that good stuff uh Instead of the cards that used to come in the Wii stuff, we have a Civivi specific little cloth and our desk camp, and this one is the Courser. Oh, they just released it last night? And, uh, I had no idea. I haven't been keeping track of the releases. And in fact, if somebody could put up there in the chat what these things are costing, I forgot to look that up before I started the stream. Uh, and I don't remember. It'd be a good thing for everybody. What's going on, Danny? Uh, anyhow, this is the Courser. $68. Thank you, Raphael, for these. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference in what you're getting. That's right. It is. No, it is not Saturday afternoon. You're over there in the East Coast, Slicey Dicey. It is late morning here in the Midwest. But anyhow, there we go. That is the Courser. We'll get the, the other one unboxed, and then we'll do a little bit of talking about the differences in the two Civivi uh, levels so far. Hey, this one, I guess, is already open. Somebody opened it for me because I hadn't opened either one of these yet. I hope it's got the right thing in it. It does. We have the Aquila in here. And... Same thing as far as packaging goes, and oh, that's nice, really nice. See, there you go. It's late morning, and where Danny's at there in Tennessee too, eleven ten. Same thing. Well, it's actually eleven seventeen here in the Midwest. I don't know how we're seven minutes ahead of you, but uh, there we go. That's the Aquila and the Courser, uh, from what I gather. Yeah, the Courser, it's a little weird for me. It's very Quaken-ish, but with more of a utilitarian blade, which is kind of cool. There's a couple things I want to check here if I did not lose my tools. And I may have, because I had them out earlier working on some things. Yeah, they are sweet looking knives names. Yeah, the Courser's cool. Uh... So these are VG10 knives, and now that we've got these out here, I have another set that I had actually, yeah, I have an ignition. I could not find uh, the little one, the uh, rectifier. I've got one around here somewhere, but it wasn't where it was supposed to be. So I don't have an, a rectifier to put it up against, but there's an ignition. And that brings up kind of where I wanted to go with part of this, we'll get the Courser out there. But uh, 
very similar in size. Our uh, Aquila is a little bit bigger than the Ignition, but not greatly so. And, oh man, my live chat keeps going away. Yeah, Sharp Braille, the Aquila is really nice. Uh, let's get uh, one of the first Civivi knives out here, and let's talk a little about the differences here. You know, we've got the 9CR18 MOV in these and the stainless deep carry pocket clip. And, you know, that is really cool. And at $42 and what, 50 cents? I, I don't think you can beat that with a good stainless in there. And now these are $68. And what we're, we've gained is, uh, you know, and I don't, I really don't know exactly how to quantify this without putting it in somebody's hands. But I don't know the model numbers, Danny. Uh, Danny asked what the model number for the two-tone is. I don't have the model numbers unless you can get them from the Sabivi website, which I actually may have up here. If I do, uh, yeah, I do have it up here. So... That is the uh, 805E is the black one, the two-tone. Anyhow, back to what I was saying. What you're gaining here is a little bit more robust knife all the way around. We've got larger screws, still stainless, in these knives. And we've got a peel ply G10 that's slightly different, more spider co ish I would say, as far as the... Uh, type of G10, and titanium pocket clip from what I can tell. I thought I had a magnet. Well, I do kind of have a magnet over here, but it's not going to be worthwhile for that. Well, it might be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that pocket clip is titanium. Hey, what's going on, man? And you guys got me looking at stuff on the computer, and I lost my friggin' uh, chat again over here on the screen. So titanium pocket clip, reversible, very nice there. And uh, I do like what they've done here with this big lanyard hole. And uh, VG10, for those of you that like VG10, I'm not a fan of VG10. You guys know that uh, at all. But I know many of you like it, and I understand that. And I really just haven't had a chance to really use Wii's VG10. You know, I've had the ignition around here for quite a while, but it was a knife I was really excited about and never really ended up using it because of, uh, well, it's been with other people all the time. People are always wanting to see this thing, so I don't ever get to use it. So anyhow, those are your major differences. We got beefier hardware. You can see that in the screws there between the two knives. Uh, we've got VG10 and a different style of G10. Now the Courser is even a little more different than that. We've got nested liners in the Courser and we're also uh, skeletonized all in there, as you can see. So, you know, $68, you know, we're still cheaper than a Delica now, as far as I know. So pretty cool uh, to be able to get BG10 and get it uh, in some Pretty neat designs, and man, the actions on these things. Let's see if we're drop shutty without cutting my finger. I've cut my finger several times over the past few weeks. I'm surprised I don't have a line right there across my thumb. Uh, all of them, yeah, all of them really good actions. So, really cool, guys. That's uh, you know, I really like that these companies are thinking about the budget into things. Yeah, J. Cool. Uh, pocket clips compatible with the earlier models. I do not believe you're going to be able to put a pocket clip. Well, you know what? We have the power right here in a T8, so we'll just see. Uh, and I can already tell you the answer is probably no because that's a T6. Let's see if I have a T6 over here. Yep. Good. Uh, we'll pull this one off and we'll pull that pocket clip off of that courser right there and see what we get. 
helps if you go back to the T8, doesn't it? Uh, you know, I don't know about that. I'll bring up that page again here in just a minute, and uh, I'll look and see what they list the bearings at. Uh, no, they are not going to fit. Those screws are different, I'm almost sure. Well, maybe not. Uh, the screws go down in there. Yeah, sharp rail. The, the liners are sturdy on all these knives. I had one out on this knife, I believe, and it uh, 60 thousandths, or right around 60 thousandths. So right in there with some of the heavier knives. Uh, you know, I think that's about equivalent with the hinderer that came out a while back uh, through Viper the Storm that is really more of a frame lock. And you know what? I don't believe that. Uh, and Taylor, no, the action is still really good. And I don't believe that, but that does work. You can put the older VB pocket clip on there. Now, I will tell you this, and what I know from working with Wii, if you want a deep carry clip, they may sell you one, but it's not going to be... Uh, no, the, you'll end up paying for it. Let's just put it that way. They, uh, they're not like Benchmade where they just give away pocket clips and stuff. So, you know, do be aware of that. I could check with them and see what these pocket clips are going to cost, which I may do that if I get an opportunity. Uh, well, we're going to investigate just a little further there, Profi Hill. Uh, somebody brought up the bearing material, which I don't know. So we're going to look at the Civivi list here. Uh, yes, you guys are right. Uh, the clip material, 6AL4B titanium on these knives and the bearings are ceramic. So that means that the bearings are ceramic, the detent ball is going to be ceramic the action on the knives obviously extremely good oh they were in stock mike well, that is cool i didn't know that uh, they had got them over here that quickly you know that's awesome good thing we're doing this video right now that way you guys can make a better informed decision instead of just uh you know buying on a whim unless you already have then well you're in the same boat as i am then uh, so pretty cool. I'm liking it. Uh, and guys, if you guys have these knives and I know I've got four of them on the table, but they're not going to stick around here. They're going to end up other places. Uh, and you get a chance to really use this VG 10. Let me know because I would like to be able to say, Hey, yeah, that VG 10 is good. I've got it on good authority or no, it's like spider co's junk. Uh, you know, I know that it's, hardened differently than spider co's but i don't know much more than that you guys will have to <laughs> you're right sharp grail you know i was thinking about that specific thing just the other day and i said i didn't have one of these well i just looked around the desk and there is one laying up here so we'll get that out and we'll get the ignition out and that's kind of your three semi-budget guys from we and Civivi and the size differences. And it is amazing that we can get something like this for 68 bucks. You know, to get actions like that a few years ago, you were talking an MSG3 from uh, Marfi Own and spending 600 to $2,000 on one. You know, maybe it's, well, still, that's Marfi Own stuff, so... It's all expensive, and we've got one more to unbox here. Yeah, that's what I've heard, is the 9CR18 is pretty good. All right, thanks, Danny. I appreciate that, because I probably won't get a chance. Danny says his will be here on Monday, and uh, he'll get a chance to really beat up on one of these knives, which would be great, because like I said, I probably won't get the opportunity to. And we'll go ahead and get this. This is the incisor it's supposed to be. It also doesn't say anything anywhere on the box. So I'm assuming it's an incisor. We'll get this thing open. Uh, same thing with the Wii stuff. 
we've got this little fold out instruction manual thing. We've got a slightly updated version of the Wii little deal. And before we get the knife out, I do want to put these out here for you guys to see the both of them. Uh, they are slightly different in size. And, and not that it makes any difference, but makes the boxes a little smaller for the Civivi stuff. And uh, Sharp Grail, I'm, I was to begin with two, but one of the guys that I was talking to the other day brought up a really good point that's uh, a bit interesting. Whenever you say, well, it's, uh, where's one at? 9CR18MOV. What happened whenever these were first rumored and talked about back at Blade Show? You know, everybody was up in arms about 9CR18MOV. Oh my God, they put junk steel in them, but they're going to sell them for a great price. You know, blah, 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 back and forth, all this craziness. And, you know, whatever. But there were people that did not buy this knife because it has a CRMOV steel in it. And there are a lot of people that will buy something simply because it says PG-10 or S30V. It has a name steel in it. They may not know the difference. Uh, all they know is that's a name steel that they've heard of. That's something that Spyderco uses, you know, whatever. It's uh, So it's probably a smart move on Wii's part to have a name steel in this line. You know, that's just my opinion because, you know, now we have VG-10 at less than the price of the Delica in some designs that, you know, like this one's a little bigger than a Delica. Uh, really nice looking stuff. Yeah, and Danny, you're right. It is comparable to 154CM, some reasonable 440C. Uh, and there's some behind the scenes or unknown stuff there by most, but... 9CR18 MOV a lot of times does get labeled as uh, 440C whenever a knife is coming out of China. It has to do with the AISI standards and 9CR18 MOV being really, really close to fitting within those standards. Uh, well, you know, is it better than D2? No. Unless you live in Louisiana, like, say, Staza 23, or in Houston, like my brother then it's way better than D2. It, it's this thing that nobody wants to talk about. Yeah, I haven't looked at Pete's test, guys. but uh, And you're right, John, they can't compete. Anyhow, take a second here. Let's get a look at this guy. I don't know if any of you are interested in these karambits. But, and, and I don't understand fully about a karambit. So... I've got to do some educating myself before I do a video on this thing. From what I understand on these karambits, I've got another one laying over here. Uh, on This is an opening mechanism now. So I've got to do a little bit of uh, <clears throat> investigation on how to use these things because it looks like you're putting them in your pocket over here. This is going to work like a wave tab. And, you know, interesting. But I'm not a karambit guy. Yeah, uh, Danny, you're right. The naming issue is the big problem here. And... Back at Blade Show, before all this VV stuff was released, I and mean, they had some out there. I talked with Joe, who's the uh, owner of Wee Knives, and he was having internal strife, I suppose you could say, about the naming on that steel because so, a bunch of his competitors are naming the 9CR18 and some of the other CR steels with uh, AISI names, which are stuff like D2 and 440C and et cetera. And he was, he didn't want to lie to you guys. And that's why these knives, uh, the first round of them, and what more of it, more of these will be coming, but it's why these knives came with 9CR18 MOV listed and not 
uh, 440C or something else because t- the owner of Wee Knives could not stomach what wasn't even really a lie. So, you know, that's why he did it. And it's went over pretty well. You know, you guys have you seen these things have sold really well and people are really liking them and people are realizing that the steel's good. So, you know, maybe market position helped we out a lot there. I don't know, but it's, uh, it's worked out pretty good. Uh, which smock is that guys? And you're right, Danny, they do. They they lump all the CR uh, 18, well, the, the CR MOV steels in one big lump, and it's just not true. They have, if you look over the list, they have the, C, or the CR MOV steels from all the way down from like 2 and 3 CR all the way up above 9 CR. There's some 10 and there's some, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of them at the high end that they use. Oh, okay. Spider Co. Schmock. Appreciate it, Danny. Uh, that they use for kitchen knives uh, over in, at, well, in China and Japan making kitchen knives that uh, there are actually chefs out there looking for. So, you know, two different worlds there. I'll have to look up the Spider Co. Schmock. I haven't uh, kept up with that. So, anyhow... Yeah, the karambit is of limited use. My, you know, Susie, she has the older week karambit, and she actually knows how to use these things, and I don't. I, I have this, uh, well, it, it's this thing that's uh, powder-fueled projectiles that I keep on my side that keeps me from needing to learn how to use one of these. <laughs> would be cool though so all right we have went through the wee knives is there anything else you guys would like to talk about or anything else you guys want to know about here with, with these knives uh i can also what else do we have here other things that are coming to the channel we looked at this at the very beginning of the video this is the best tech front flipper that i'm awful at front flipping but uh, i'm sure many of you will be much better at it Got a video upcoming on these. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they're really mall ninja, but you need to know how to use the karambit, and and I just don't. This is what they're what uh, Best Tech is now calling Spectrum Ti, a way of doing a uh, electric anodization that comes out really cool yeah it's like a full-size knife front flipper and it's it's working better and better whenever it first showed up here i was like ah, i don't like that but uh it's gotten better and better and you know that's really cool but uh, i still don't know how much i really dig the thing but uh i suppose it's neat to have around uh, do we got a review of that coming up? I don't have anything done on that one yet. And the front flipper. Can't, Danny. This is actually a gift that was sent over by a lady, Selena. So I, I can't just send this one to you. Sorry. Well, yeah, from the meta, well trained on front, front flipper from the metamorph. I can understand that. Uh, and I did well with some of the other front flippers. This one was just weird for me for a little while. I don't know what it was. Uh, other things we've got coming up here, the Junzi, uh, that, and I, uh, Hunzi, I don't know how to pronounce it. That's another best tech. Uh, I just got in a bunch of stuff from those guys. And we have one of these. Well, sorry, man. Uh, Selena and I go way back now. It's one of those things, you know. But uh, this thing is pretty cool. The best part of this knife is we have... 
Yeah, I thought I had seen it before. I just, uh, the and yeah, I was it Kaiser that was doing the Spectrum TI thing? I just couldn't remember where because I, it wasn't my favorite thing. I do rather like it on this knife. Some of the other best Texas that they're doing it on, I'm like, whoa, never mind. I don't need that. Anyhow, back to the Perpetua. Okay, this is a very, very simple knife. Masteroff had some extras of the Perpetua. Is that what you're saying, Shortcut Reviews? If so, everybody get over there and get one because I'm about to say some prophetic things about this that will upset all the Benchmade fans and, uh, well, all the people who have been burnt by Benchmade over the years will like it. Yeah, Shortcut Review says yes, so there's some extras of these over at Mass Drop, and that is super cool. Go grab them, guys. Quit listening to the stream and just go grab them. Uh, anyhow, the cool thing about this knife is not the Nitro V. It's not any of the other stuff. It's the fact that I have a zero play freaking uh, slide lock. That's what's cool about that. Uh, I have only had two or three bench maids that had a zero play lock in them. And they were all griptillions of all things. All the more expensive Benchmades I've ever had have had some sort of play in them or developed play over time. I've got a 710 somewhere that's uh, really a super nice knife. Even got my name on it. And uh, it didn't develop play for quite a while, but then at some point it was just there and you couldn't do anything about it. Uh, yeah, you're probably right, Danny. As you know, I don't deal with uh, Ganzo anymore. Whenever they directly copied Spyderco and, uh, well, not really Spyderco, but they directly copied the bird knives right down to everything but the shape and the blade hole, that was enough. I quit. And that's, you know, some people will say, well, give them a chance. Well, I'm not going to until they get rid of all that stuff. And that's partially because, you know, guys, I designed these things and I'm not going to support some company that, is uh ripping designers off off uh the engine yes i'll i've got a couple of the engines here we'll do that and you know that's the cool thing about the engine is it's got this little oh i don't know what what do i call this it's kind of like a you know pack of gum design it's whenever it's things closed up it's just kind of a little square box and uh get the guy open and it fits really good you got a full four four finger on it and uh yeah it is designed it's like, like slicey dicey saying there it is specifically designed for using that choil it's not designed to hold back here because it's just weird if you hold it back here it's designed to be right there so, you know, you know, and it doesn't change any whenever you get the clip point, but, uh, yeah, John, this backspacer is super cool. Okay. Pointy things. The Roxy will be out in December. I did not get the malware out before I started the live stream. It's over locked up in the cage. Uh, but the malware with Best Tech should be out November, December. And we have the full size Roxy is set for a midsummer release next year. And we have the Master Chief. Yeah, four inch Roxy is probably around June next year. Uh, we have the Master Chief and the Val coming with another company. And we have no idea what time, when those are going to arrive. Uh, this is a RISTI prototype, and actually this one, this this size will come to market at some point. This blade shape won't. Whenever we made this one, I, we designed it specifically for me, and uh, we're going to have to give the blade a little bit more belly. <laughs> well, I appreciate it whenever people send me money, Slicey. You know, even if it is laundered through other companies, that's fine as long as it gets to me. Uh, so, 
Anyhow, if this one comes to market or when it does, it'll have a little more belly to the blade, but this is the Roxy. Uh, Seth and I built this in about 36 hours from start to finish. We started, uh, probably less than that because we started late Friday night and finished it up early Sunday. It was supposed to go out directly to another company, and then that company did some things that we weren't too happy about, so we pulled that deal, and we haven't had anybody else pick it up yet, but we'll see. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Sharp Grail. Like I said, uh, the, the whole Todd Knife and Tool thing has been a long time coming. Seth and I have been working on it for more than three years now, and... I know there was a lot of, well, you guys are never going to get there because we'd show stuff early on and, you know, we're finally getting there. It just takes time. And, oh, it's just, it's a great thing. It's going to be hopefully really great for you guys and so much fun for everybody. You know, that that's what we're hoping for. And uh, something I was going to point out on these engines earlier, and you guys got me all sidetracked and stuff, which is super cool, but uh, these two blade shapes, you've got your kind of drop point and kind of clip point looking things. The actual blade itself. Hey, what's going on, Slide Tech? And I'm glad you think so. The, these two blades, the actual cutting edge is exactly the same. It's not, the, the top cut on the blade is the only thing that's different on these two Best Tech engines, which, you know, cool on them that they were able to get two cool looking shapes out of them and uh, not have to do a lot of difference on the blade. And uh, now this isn't a Roxy, this is, or this is a Risty. Yeah, I know, very close, but two different dogs. And it is, man, I love this marble carbon fiber. I just got, and it's not over here either, but I just got an eraser from Leong Ma and marble carbon fiber. Oof, just gorgeous stuff. I wish it had better stability. Oh, no problem, Raphael. Uh, Rick's Risty, Roxy, you know, pretty close. And, uh, but yeah, that is something, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but I'll go through the story real quick. Roxy was my uh, brother's Presa Canario, which is a big dog, kind of like a bull mastiff, only a little bit longer in body and uh, walks a little more like a cat, but about the same. Yeah, it has. We'll get back to that goblin versus the engine here in just a minute, Sharp Grail. And then Risty was my bull mastiff. Uh, those of you that have watched the channel for a long time probably got to see her while she was alive. But she passed away. It's getting on close to two years now. And, uh, you know, the Roxy and the Risty are knives that are uh, named after those pups. And uh, eventually there will be a Nix and a Val. Uh, Val is my little brother's uh, Press Canario pup, and Nix is my full Mastiff pup. And, oh, what were we at? Engine and, let me look back there. Uh, Goblin versus Engine. Yes, it means both, because they are two very cool and very different little knives to do the same job <coughs> and i'm getting to where i've got too much stuff out here and now i can't find the little engine i just had them guys what i did there we go uh the difference is you got the little pillbox design here and i don't have a goblin i may have one over on the other desk hang on and i did have one over on the other desk Oh, we could name knives after your dogs, man. And yeah, Danny, uh, Press Canarios and 
bull mastiffs are unfortunately not cheap dogs. Uh, but there is your comparison for your uh, goblin and your engine. And the big difference here is blade shape, of course, and how thick your handle is right here. And it really depends on what you're going to do with it. If you're going to let it lay down in the pocket and just hide in the, you know, just float down in the pocket, I would consider probably getting one of these with the carbon fiber on it. Uh, if you're going to try to clip it on your pocket, I think this is better for that. Uh, the engine is better for that. Uh, oh, the other one. Yeah, I'm kind of a fan of the clip point, but I can see the drop point. Now, one thing really cool about these knives is the way they did the backspacer. See how you got this uh, titanium, anodized titanium here? Well, it goes right up through here. No problem, Sharp Grail. Since we had them in place, we might as well look at them. Uh, that is a really cool backspacer. The carbon fiber lays on top of it. It's all been milled out, looking pretty and everything. And what it really is, is a really cool way to make sure that you don't have to spend extra money on carbon fiber because this is probably a standard thickness carbon fiber. And they built this little shelf out of titanium to lay it on. So really cool, but it also, also Best Tech was really thinking and did a good job of saving themselves some money. Oh, and hey, Brian, you had this knife at one time and I have got it straightened out. I had to do some internal work to it. Uh, lock bar tension was just way too high. Uh, Spectrum TI is what they're calling that pointy things. Three K for what? Your ex just paid three K for what, man? The dog. Yeah, there's always that. <laughs> You're right. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Okay, I ain't paying 3K for one of those. If somebody else wants to, that's great. Uh, my bull mastiff's cost, cost enough. Yeah, they are small knives, but that's something, guys. You know, what is the deal? You guys tell me. You know, I'm I'm the guy that carries the uh, this. And I stick one of those in my pocket. Uh, you have a good point there, Danny. A knife will last longer than eight years as long as you take care of it. Most of these big dogs don't. Uh, but there is this deal right now with all of these small knives. You know, whenever we designed the Roxy, we designed that knife three years ago. We designed it because there were only like three or four small knives on the market. And now that it's finally going to come to fruition and be produced, all of a sudden, they're everywhere. Well, yeah, I, at Shortcut Reviews, the 380 of knives, yeah, absolutely. And that's the way I've always used them. And, and also, pointy things is talking about the sheeple being scared whenever you pull out, you know, you pull this thing out and was ah, you got a four inch blade sticking out there. I get that too. And that's another reason I've always carried something smallish. Okay. So I get it, you know, if you do this, people get freaky, and you don't want them to get freaky, right? But uh, it just seems there's been an explosion of people really, really wanting this 2.95 and less knife, which, you know, that's cool, and unless you're the guy designing knives that has two four-inch knives on the way, a three-and-a-half or three-and-a-three-quarter-inch knife, no, three four-inch knives on the way, a three-and-three-quarter two three and three quarter inch knives on the way and one two and five eighths all right have a good one danny appreciate you stopping by 
How often in the average setting do you need a four inch blade? So, uh, you don't. In fact, the four inch blade can actually be a bit of a hindrance. Three and a half is really that place where your handle to blade length becomes something that is infinitely usable. Uh, whenever you, that extra half inch, for whatever reason, does make a difference. So, the, and I'm sure that's why the majority of knives out there are three and a half inch blade or around that. Uh, the four inch blade, I've learned how to use it. And that's one of those things people will talk, and I've heard this over and over again. Well, that is, that blade is specifically for this. That blade is specifically for that. You know, the Warncliffe only can do this and only can do that. Well, uh, the, I really think that's crap. I really do. I really think you can, with any blade that has, not a karambit, but any blade like this or like this, you can figure out how to do things with, and you can learn how to use that blade and use it effectively. You know, I carried a Kershaw Link for a long time, and... Uh, that's got kind of this worn cliffish thing on it. And to begin with, it was a little weird to use, but it got to the point I loved it and I didn't like using a blade with a big belly on it, you know, like something like that. So I think it's just what you learn how to use. And slide tech, you're right. About three and a half inches a sweet spot. Oh uh, yeah, pointy things. People are gonna ask you got a big old ring sticking out your pocket. I don't know where those knives went. They're right here somewhere. You got a ring that size sticking out of your pocket. People are going to ask about that. And Raphael, I believe that you're a, you're about right now. On the smaller blade, you know, like this one, I think, and uh, Slicey can correct me if I'm wrong here, but where are we at? Like two almost three inches on this one, if you count the choil, uh, I would carry that as a backup knife. And it's not because of the blade length, it's because it's not any more or less knife in my pocket than the Goblin is. So, you know, I guess whenever what I'm saying is for backup knife, I'm thinking more about the size of something in my pocket and how much it weighs and all those things than I am whether it's got a two inch blade or a three inch blade. But, uh, all right, guys, how long we've we been going? We've been going for 43 minutes, so we'll do two more minutes. Anybody got anything to ask, anything they'd like to talk about? Because uh, you guys have been great. I'm going to try to do this live streaming more often because it's just way more fun to talk to you guys and sit behind the camera, record crap, and then try to catch up with comments. So what all did we, there are the coursers, because this is what we started this thing for. We started it for these guys here, and we'll set one of these over here on the end. Thanks, Kiefer. I, I'm liking the live streaming, too. Believe it or not, live streaming takes a load off of me. Instead of recording videos, editing videos, blah, 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 all the stuff, and then trying to respond to all the comments, we kind of got it all in one package here. And we can interact with each other. And I like that a lot. Now, I don't know if we're going to do reviews that way because that's getting a little off the deep end maybe because I think the actual, uh, yeah, no kidding, slide deck, it's, it's catching them for sure. But the reviews, I think you really need a more structured environment for, even though I don't really do reviews anymore. But for stuff like this, yeah, I want to try to do live streams more because it's way more fun, I think, for all of us. And I'm also working on getting Staza 23 to come in whenever we do this kind of thing so that we've got two opinions, not just me. Uh, click the bell, man. Yeah, that's the big deal. Click the bell if you want to get notified. Whenever I get into more used to doing these, I'll probably put a notification over on Instagram. And we will be doing some live stuff over on Instagram, too. In fact... Sometime later this evening, I will 
probably be late, late this evening. I may do a Instagram live feed over these knives as well. Uh, I have no idea, Pointy Things, how many designs they're going to do with Civivi. Uh, I have not privy to any of that information. Uh, the only reason I can tell you that we're at about only two or three left from uh, we is because this is, what, 817? <laughs> uh, so that means there's only three left for we for this year. Uh, but I don't know what they're planning on with Civivi. I was hoping that it wasn't going to be as many designs over and over and over again, uh, or as many releases, but, you know, we just got to kind of wait and see. Uh, best deck with Tan G10 to compare to the CVVs. Uh, you know, I don't. Just about every best deck that ends up running through here is black. <laughs> I don't know why, but I don't end up with the colors on the CVV stuff, or on the best tech stuff it's always black or carbon fiber but anyhow guys i really appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me uh yeah i don't know i will be and i just well, i guess we're going to continue this for a couple minutes i'm going to blade show west next week uh we is sponsoring my appearance there so i'll be with we i can ask them specifically about the Civivi knives and maybe we can get a little bit more information. Awesome. Glad you got it. I don't remember which one of 714 is because I lose track of all of them. But uh, I'm glad you got one. I'm glad you like it. And anyhow, guys, I got to back on out of here. You guys have a great day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click that little bell so that you get the notifications whenever I go up for a live stream, and you get the notifications whenever I put stuff in this crazy YouTube chat thing they've got, uh, which, if you click the bell, it should notify you whenever I put something there, and that's, yeah, you, you take it easy too, man. That's where uh, I'll be putting a notification, and I'll try to put notifications over on Instagram, this is only the second, third, fourth live stream I've done, so I'm really trying to get all the hardware in set up to do it. And uh, did this go over well, guys? Did sound and all that stuff? Because, uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm worried about is sound and the such like. It... Awesome slide tick. You guys have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys, and I will see you next time.